Yama, I'm Jack, and this is Newsbreak. Today is the 29th of February. Woohoo! Why is that worth celebrating? Well, because the 29th of February only happens every four years. Josh found out why. Hip, hip. Hooray! Thank you. Thank you very much. How old are you turning again? I'm turning five. <laughs> no, how old are you really turning? Five. I'm turning five. But you're not. But you're not. Yeah, for those born on the 29th of February, most of the time their birthday doesn't even exist. What? So they've got a bit of catching up to do. You've got a beard. That's because the 29th of February is a leap day that only exists in our calendars once every four years. And while it might seem pretty strange, without it, things here on Earth would get really out of whack. You see, while most people think it takes 365 days for our planet to circle the sun, it's actually more like 365 days and nearly six hours. So after a few years, an extra 24 hours or one whole day has added up and needs to be added to the calendar. That's when a leap year comes in to save the day. And without it, our calendars would gradually start to fall totally out of sync with the seasons, which could lead to some pretty strange weather. Isn't Christmas usually warm in Australia? <laughs> As for all you leaplings out there, which is the name given to someone who was born on a leap day, well, only about one in every 1,500 people share your birthday, so you're pretty special. <laughs> do you seriously not get it yet? No, but how does... How, how do you... I, I don't understand... I, 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 you. Now let's keep the celebrations rolling because the Matildas are going to the Olympics. Yep, the Tillies booked their giant novelty-sized ticket to Paris last night after winning their second qualifying match against Uzbekistan 10-0. Veteran striker Michelle Heyman had another massive night, scoring four goals in the first 45 minutes alone. Heyman adding the finishing touches to an outstanding first half of football for the Matildas. But it was a real team effort, with Caitlin Torpy, Mary Fowler, Caitlin Ford, Hayley Rasso and Amy Sayer also hitting the scoreboard. Now to the central coast, where some people who are vision impaired and blind are learning to surf with the help of some pros. Check it out. When Will found out he could take part in a surfing lesson for blind people, three words sprang to mind. Sign me up. <laughs> the new class has been created by former pro surfer Amy Donohoe, who wanted to give people who are blind and visually impaired the opportunity to learn how to surf in a safe environment. Lessons start on the sand, so students can get familiar with their boards before heading into the water. Three, two, one, hold! And each step of the way, coaches are by their side, using verbal descriptions and hands-on explanations to help them feel safe and to get used to the sensations of surfing. Get smacked into the sand and it's just, I don't know, it's, it's fun. And lucky for these guys, they've also got four-time world champ blind surfer Matt Formston on hand to give them some tips. They use other people as spotters and they tell me, they give me verbal information as to what, where the wave's coming from or what direction it's going in. They say it takes a lifetime to do this stuff. I think I'm going to spend the rest of my life trying to nail it, so this is going to be good. Oh. Oh, wait a second, this isn't what I ordered. Just like these next stories. But no, seriously, I didn't, I didn't order any of this. First up, this isn't exactly a world of pure imagination. Families were quite disappointed after attending this Willy Wonka experience in Glasgow in the UK, claiming it's not what they ordered, or at least it's not what was advertised. Pretty soon police were called in, the event was canceled and visitors were issued refunds. If you were in Dubai recently, you might have caught some superheroes whizzing around the harbour. OK, you got me. They're not superheroes. They're just regular people wearing jet suits. It's all part of the world's first jet suit race. And finally, a fashion show has taken place at the New York Botanical Garden. But wait a second, they're not clothes, they're flowers. More specifically, they're orchids that have been carefully crafted into couture pieces by three fashion designers for the Florals in Fashion Orchid Show. Oh, oh wait a second, I did order this. Never mind. Well, we'll be back with more news tomorrow. Bye. Huh.